Hello guys, I hope you're all doing very well. Now, I know what you're thinking, Tia, why are you playing MOVA? Have you descended to the dark side and should we all unsubscribe from your channel? Now, I was considering making a MOVA deck guide, but as I was doing it, I felt icky and like I should take a shower. So that's what I did. I did take a shower. I rethought what I was doing with my life. And instead, I am going to show you how to beat MOVA today and make an anti MOVA deck guide. So how are we going to do this? I made the most toxic version of MOVA I could think of. I'm going to play with this version. I'm going to find its weaknesses and I'm going to show you exactly how to exploit that. But first things first, you have to know the cards in the MOVA deck guide if you want to abuse those cards. So let's start at the basics, shall we? Okay, firstly, what makes MOVA so toxic? It's the fact that it's an uninteractive deck. Not MOVA herself per se, but the fact that you can't touch any of the cards, meaning that half of your decks are unplayable now, you can't play vampires, you can't necessarily play an assimilate Nulfgar deck, you have to play decks that make points on their own. So far, the anti-MOVA decks that I have found to be meta is Northern Realm Shieldwall, Syndicate, King of Beggars, Savola Point Slam, and thirdly, the Deathwish Monsters version of Detlef and Arachas Queen. Now, these can beat MOVA, but you still need to have a strategy. So, first things first, what makes MOVA so strong? The fact that you can have a point slam round one that will beat your opponent, and then round two or three, you can go uninteractive and you can simply bleed your opponent to pieces. So, ideally, MOVA decks want to start with Saskia. Saskia is built in a very specific way. She has a counter of three, she's immune, so you can't actually touch her, and she will summon a random bronze square tile unit with a primary category that is not yet on your board to this row. So, that already is a bit awkward. Now, unless you've played Saskia before, you don't necessarily see Saskia brick that often, but it happens. Now, what you want to do in round one is beat Mova at all costs because you need to determine whether you want a long round three to outpoint Mova or a short round two to bleed out all of their uninteractive traps. So in order to do that, you need to terminate Saskia. Now, if your opponent doesn't play Saskia round one, chances are they haven't drawn it and they have a really awkward hand. You want to see as many traps come out in round one as possible because your opponent doesn't want to play traps round one. They want to play all of their traps together in a short or long round, and then end off by playing Aldane and turning all of those traps into three-point Alvin Delis. The moment you don't have Aldane, you're left with only traps that can play for even zero points at a time if maneuvered around correctly. Your opponent never wants to play their traps early, and they don't want to play it when they don't have Aldane to turn them into Alvin Deadeyes. So, let's say your opponent starts off with Saskia. Saskia on deploy will immediately put another card on the board. That card could be anything from a Pyrotechnician, a Dryad Matron, it could be a Cat Witcher, or even a Doblathana Sentry. So, how do we kill Saskia immediately? Well, let me show you. Another deck that outpoints MOVA is Pirates. Why? Because Pirates make their own points easily. They also have a lot of control. And your opponent is bound to start off with Saskia. Okay, that's a four point card you can't touch, along with another card you can touch. So, how do we kill it? Well, with the Onslaught Leader ability, you can quickly kill the card to the right of Saskia. Or you can just damage it if that's enough. Then you play a sneaky delirium, easy peasy, that will split six damage randomly between all units on an enemy row, killing Saskia. All of a sudden your opponent doesn't have point slam round one, you can outpoint your opponent, you can bleed out the traps round two, and round three, you are simply bound to win the game. So that's 
Skellige. How about the new Death Wish deck, Arachas? Arachas is strong because you can make Death Laugh multiple times with cards like Abaya and the Arachas Queen. But how do we quickly kill Saskia? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are many ways to do so, the first being Manticore. Now you're going to want to play this twice real quick. Imperial Manticore means you will destroy the lowest enemy unit. This will likely be Saskia. If it's not, you're going to have to do this twice real quick. The only way to do this twice is by using the Urn of Shadow stratagem. This will trigger a death wish of an allied unit. So you'll be able to trigger Manticore and you'll be able to use Manticore with a quick leader ability. Easy peasy, right? There's more to do. Uh, you also, of course, have the card that steals a four point card, which is going to be Maruna. So Maruna is also pretty nice because you steal Saskia. Now, this is cool because Maruna steals a four point card. So if your opponent happens to have a card on their side of the board that's more than four next to Saskia, you don't have to worry about having to duplicate Maruna, you just steal uh, Saskia right off the bat. So Monsters is pretty icky to play against if you happen to be um, Milva, because honestly Milva can't even outpoint uh, the current Arachas deck in a long round. So Milva has to win round one and has to bleed out death laugh round two, or else you don't stand a chance. Okay, so let's say you can't necessarily get rid of Saskia round one. Well, you can certainly abuse her. Now, Saskia has a little text here that you have to read carefully. She summons a random bronze square tile unit with a primary category that is not yet on your side of the battlefield. So, it means that often than not, if the opponent drew poorly, they only have so many cards that Saskia can summon. Let's say you have a Doblathana sentry in your hand. If you want Saskia to draw a Doblathana sentry from the deck, it means you can't yet play this one on the board. Because the moment it's on the board, Saskia will register this as already existing on your side and she won't draw another one. What often happens is my opponent kills my card, meaning I will draw the other one. So I can risk playing some of these cards earlier than not, merely because I know my opponent will kill them for me. And that's quite nice. Now, another thing that could happen is I could, of course, have both of these in my deck. You kill the first one and I'm guaranteed to draw the second one, which is also great for me. So Saskia can get a little bit awkward and you have to sort of feel around for what your opponent has. Like we have one dwarf, so you can kill the dwarf. We have two Dried Matrons, we have two Doblathana Sentries, and we have two Cat Witches. So keep an eye on that and figure out what you need to do to play around it. Now, let's say you manage to win round one, which is possible, believe it or not. Now you're heading into round two against Milva. So round two is the round they don't want, unless they're in control of it they don't want you to bleed out their traps because believe it or not we don't have a lot of points in this deck um we rely on getting rid of your points and ending up with a lot of traps we can turn into elven dead eyes so if you can get rid of their traps round two and bleed it out round three we're left with pretty much nothing we're left with uh milva which isn't a lot maybe maddock a few bombs that might not find value and a few traps that might not have Aldane anymore. It's really horrible to be bled if you are Mova. So that is essentially what you need to do. Win round one, bleed round two, go into round three with little to no traps left. Unless you are playing a deck that can outpoint Mova, like Arachas Queen. When you're playing Deathwish Monsters, you can go into a long round three. You will outpoint Mova. It's acceptable to do that. Just know your decks. If you're playing King of Beggars with Syndicate, you can outpoint Mulva in a short round. So you want to bleed out all the traps round two, then go into a short round three, play Savola, win the game. It's as easy as that, really. So let's take a look at the cards in this deck so that you know how to play around traps, because this is possible. If you ever see your opponent playing a trap on their side of the board, it's likely going to start off with the incinerating trap. Now, uh, an incinerating trap damages the next card you play by five. So if you see this random trap pop onto the board, you don't want to play a strong engine 
because it's likely gonna die. You wanna play something useless or something with a lot of armor. Normally the incinerating trap is the first one MOVA players commit. Now, their next card could also be an incinerating trap. It could be. But if you are in the beginning of a long round, Serpent Trap is also something you need to look out for. This is a pretty dangerous card because it not only destroys your largest card if you play a special card, it also has the Spring ability, which will destroy the enemy unit with the lowest power. So let's say you're going into a short round 3 against Mulva and they haven't yet played the Serpent Trap. Well, your first card you play can't be your most valuable card. Let's say you want to play a Defender. That's not going to fly. You can't place a Defender on the board first because they can just play Serpent Trap, click on it and kill the Defender. Also, they often will make a second one using... Oh, that's not right. Using Ibir Hatuari. He creates and plays a trap card from your starting deck. So he might not always give you Serpent Trap, but you will want to use the most valuable card it gives you, which happens to be Serpent Trap. So people can actually do that twice in a row. Kill the card on your side of the board with a quick spring of the Serpent Trap. The other cards they choose to go for is Pitfall Trap. Now, Pitfall Trap is something you play near the end of the game. Why? Because... After your opponent plays a card, this will split damage equal to the provision cost of that card. Now, we tend to save our largest cards for last, the most powerful cards for last. And when the pitfall trap goes off, it means that that provision cost will be transformed into damage. So, you want to commit some of your stronger cards earlier than later. When you get sniff in the nose that pitfall trap has been played, you want to make sure you play a bad card. Now, you can't always predict this, but it's easier than you'd think. Now, these cards go off the moment you play a card. So it's easy to know. If your opponent plays Incinerating Trap and you play a trap, you'll see it's Incinerating Trap. If they play Pitfall Trap and you play a card, they'll see so. Now, the cards that don't immediately go off is Serpent Trap. If this card is face down and it doesn't go off within two turns... It means it's Serpent Trap. Now, you can sort of play around this. Let's say your largest card is a Sea Jackal boosted all the way to 20 points. And your last card is Vivaldi Bank. Vivaldi Bank is a special card. You have to decide whether Vivaldi Bank has more points than a 20 point Sea Jackal. Often than not, it doesn't. So you're going to want to throw Vivaldi Bank into your graveyard. Which is easy to do, you just click on Vivaldi Bank and click on the graveyard and you discard it. So Serpent Trap doesn't go off. Now your opponent is forced to click on it, destroying your lowest card. Now after a long round 3 or a short round 3, your lowest card is often going to be something like 1 or 2 points. So Serpent Trap is a waste. You have to keep an eye on this card and carefully decide whether it's worth playing around it or just triggering it early on with a low point card and a special card okay your other card is crushing trap now this goes off after two turns so you're able to tell whether this is a serpent trap or not after two turns if it doesn't go off it means it's serpent trap so after two turns at the end of your turn this will damage all enemy units on the row of the most units by two this is also a reason you don't want a row stack if you're playing against mulva you have to be careful. Now, this can also be clicked and damages all enemy units on a row by one point. Obviously half as strong, not ideal. So these are all the cards you can see being played. There are other trap cards, but nobody plays them right now and they also won't. You don't have to worry about them. You just need to know these. I just told you not to row stack, right? Well, it's not always that easy. You have cards like the Sabertooth Tiger, which will end up damaging cards that are alone on their row by two points every turn. So you have to make sure you have more than one card on a row at all times. This isn't always easy as you are playing against Guerrilla Tactics as well as Mulva. A little trick to keep in mind is that Guerrilla Tactics will damage a card by two points, Mulva will come out damaging it by one, and then she clicks and damages it by two. So a good rule of thumb is that Mulva has a reach of five points. If your card is bigger than 5 points, it should be outside of killing range. Unless your opponent overcommits, 
and uses more cards to damage it down or uses a leader ability twice. Of course this is possible as we're also playing Madoc in this uh, spicy, wholesome little deck of ours. Now, Madoc will come out every time we play a bomb. We have making a bomb which will give an enemy unit bleeding for four turns or just damage it by four points if you move it into another row. By moving a card, you'll also trigger Mulva. So, you have making a bomb that will let Mulva come out of the deck. And already you damaged the card by 4 points, Mulva comes out damaging it by 1 point, and you have a leader ability for 2 more points, and Mulva for 2 more points. So, that's a lot of commitment though, but it has more reach, unfortunately, than just 5 points. Okay, now, this is essentially the deck. I can go into more detail, but again, what I essentially want to show you is, is exactly the vulnerabilities of the deck itself and how you can abuse those vulnerabilities. As you can see, there's not a lot of points in this deck. It's mostly unitless, which is Milva's biggest weakness and at the same time her biggest asset. So you have to get those units out round one, you have to win by killing Saskia, and then round two. You either decide whether you want to bleed out all the traps, because round three will be useless for Mulva if you're able to do that, or you can decide whether you want to go into a long round three and just outpoint Mulva easily by playing something like uh, Raja's Queen and Death Laugh. Okay guys, I'm now going to show you how I absolutely slaughter my opponent whilst playing this deck. I want you to take a look at the cards in my hand and see that it's never perfect. I will almost always have a few traps round one, and I don't want to commit those. So if my opponent pushes me round one, I have to play them, and that makes my round two and three already a lot weaker than they would have been. So just keep an eye on that. If I don't play Saskia round one, I haven't drawn Saskia. Again, suddenly I lack a lot of points and I'm in trouble and I don't want to play my traps round one, so essentially I'll be bluffing all the way, and it's easy to pick up whether I'm bluffing or not. So, I'm going to show you how I destroy my opponent, because this deck is just too strong. I might show you how I destroy my second opponent, because of my fragile ego, and then round three, or well, the third game, I will show you how my opponent destroys me. And uh, hopefully that inspires you to uh, build a deck that is anti-Mulva. If you're not able to do so, I'll build an anti-Mulva deck for you and probably post that either tomorrow or the day thereafter. I hope you guys enjoyed my first anti-deck guide. I hope you've learned a thing or two. And uh, yeah, don't destroy me in the comments, please. <laughs> bye bye you know, We're playing against wholesome decks. I wasn't expecting this. Um, are you guys excited for The Witcher? I can't wait. I really want to watch it, but... See, okay, I'm showing you the inside of it, right? Look, I drew into Milva and Madoc, and I'm left with nothing of value. I want to show you how easy it is to lose with this deck if you don't draw the right stuff. Now, he doesn't know I haven't drawn the right stuff. Now I have to bluff my way into making my opponent pass. Because I have nothing I want. I'm planning to watch later. I'm going to watch the whole thing tonight. But I'm waiting for my mom. Because I'm going to watch it with her. Almost like we didn't ask. <laughs> I don't care. This is wholesome Mulva day today. Um... What do I want to do? Probably do this. The trap version? Yeah, I made the most toxic version for a reason. I made the most toxic version. So we can build an anti-meta deck. I already have one I made. Because I played offline. Because I'm a horrible person like that. Uh, we'll do this, and this, and now I'll play this and give it a boost. Whole season is out? I think it might already be, I'm not sure. No, it's not wholesome Mulva, this is the toxic version of Mulva. 
We're playing it for a few games and then we're going to play the shield wall deck I'm building to counter this deck. Also the next deck we're going to play that counters this deck is the Deathwish Arachas Queen version. Because I faced it a few times and it does really well against this version of this deck. Okay. Yeah, so far they're struggling. Look at that. Because I'm a filthy Milva player, I miscalculated Milva. She comes out, boom, I lose. No, I don't lose. I still win, but, but the point has been made. Oh, that's the first oopsie you made. That's the first oopsie you made. See, when this happens, you have to kill Mulva. It is known. Now, I'm going to show him that I have bad cards. Bingo, bango, bongo. My hand's horrible, opponent. You must keep pushing. Hey, you good. See, how are you doing? If I play Mulva, I sit on his throne of lies. We're not playing Mulva for long. Don't worry, I'm very well aware of how... Absolutely horrible this deck is. Don't get me wrong. With with the blood of elves. Okay, so our friend is going to play some Lus. Um, I'm gonna have to give him another peek of my hand, which I don't want to do. Look, my hand's horrible. Keep pushing me. I love your intro to YouTube videos. It keeps the regular players like me aware of the deck potential. I'm glad you like it. The elders must put a stop to this weapon, else they will face Okay. The um Is this me passing? Hey Iniku, yeah, it's finally here. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this. That's the word, King. Whee. Okay, now we pass. Win a joint stream with hand reader? Oh. <laughs> Ain't not. And we win. Whenever hand reader wants to do one. Vampires goes hard. No, 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 no. Vampires. Loses against Mulva. Vampires was horrible against Mulva. That. No, 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 no. I made the original vampire deck and I died inside. I've won more than I've lost than you, sir, of playing against horrible opponents. Because any person who knows what they're doing will just slap you in the face with their Mulva deck. They'll just, they'll just slap you. So hard. Perhaps. Maybe I'm just good. <laughs> Are you that good? Hey, if you're that good, then I would like to... I would like to get some coaching, please. Because I'm failing. Utterly. The thing is, Regis doesn't get any, um... Points. Because <laughs> you can't... You can't bleed cards that don't exist. That's a secret. You can't bleed cards that don't exist. Hey, Saskia, how you doing? Okay, uh, this is probably gonna have to do it for now. Saskia will draw me three cards in total. Mulva will pop out when I need her to. We'll see how this does. Regus ain't the crux. Hmm. OP bronze package. Got you, got you. Uh, thanks for the follow. One and two and three and four. Mulva's knocking on your door. She didn't even say goodbye. As a mother, do you have a favorite child between your beloved self, Eater, and those new and shiny vampires? No, it's gonna have to be my little om nom nom. Hey, Oscar. Uh, 
I was absolutely farming vampires with more than no units. This is what I'm say. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. No, only decks that can generate points on their own independently of their opponent's cards, solitaire decks, can outpoint Mova. Unless the Mova player just doesn't know what they're doing. This moment, I've seen it already. Oh. Interesting. Now I could probably do this. Schlep. Okay, and I'd like to say we can do this. Should we play the Doblathana Sentry? I feel it's too early for that. Instead, let's go Sire Synthesis. Number one vampire player. <laughs> Okay, Kips, you know what? You and me, we can play against each other later if you want. You show me how it's done. I wanna see. I wanna see the way. Uh oh. What is this? Uh oh. <laughs> Have you been bluffing? Hey, Tolyman. Perhaps. <laughs> Why does this not shock me? It's almost like I knew. Uh, let's go with Cat Witcher. We'll start by bonking the back row. Pixies even. Slap. But it is good. I believe you. I believe you. Are Cyosthesis and Photosynthesis related? It's a good question. That's a very good question. Ooh, Serpent Trap. Yaga. You go, Serpent Trap. Because I use everything as bait, then BAM! Catnip instead of crowns? Can you imagine? Gezra's? Oh no! That's illegal. Give it to Gezra's. No. No, don't do it. Give it to Gezra's. Oh, I should have used her on oh, no, Gezra as I wasn't concentrating. Um, hey, Batman, how are you doing? Gore time. Slap. Beautiful. Beautiful creatures. Beautiful song. La 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 Toxic. So toxic. No guys, I'm not even kidding. This deck is far too strong. I'm genuinely trying to build an anti-meta deck guide. I've recorded the beginning for YouTube. I don't expect a GG, no. I do not deserve a GG. Damn it. <sighs> okay. See, we need to play until somebody beats us with an epic deck. So we can analyze why they won and turn that around into our new deck. Toxic streamer, I'm sorry guys. I felt icky making this deck, I'm not gonna lie. 
synesthesis. Don't you afraid people call you one of those after playing Mulva? I couldn't care less. To be honest, people call one no toxic retreat, no matter what deck you play, as long as it's a strong deck. You hate playing against this deck? I know. I know you do. We're playing it today to build an anti-deck. But alas, so far nobody has beat us. I think when somebody beats us, we can move on to the anti-deck, which is going to be Shield Wall today. Right now we have Saskia in hand round one, which is what we want. We can get rid of Dried Matron because we'll pull it out. And maybe a trap because we have far too many. Ah, okay, that's fine. In before loose in a mirror. Mirrors don't go that badly, actually. People don't know how to pilot mirrors. Weirdly enough. Now. This is one of the ways to beat Sasuke on one turn, by the way. All you have to do is play Onslaught and then Delirium. Which is a bit scary. Uh, so let's start off with something else, like Northern Wind. Okay. Keep it at that. Need to win round one and bleed round two against Mulva. Yes, depending on what deck you're playing. In some, you can go for a long round three, and you're gonna outpoint Mulva easily. Demon! Thanks for the follow, Inre. We're not sharing this deck. I'm not sharing this deck. I've made a promise to my fellow man. If played next to a ship, spawn a base copy of self, damage unit by one. Absolutely unacceptable. Oh, I forgot I have Mulva in hand. <laughs> Great, here, yeah. Amazing. Show them what not to do. Hey, whacker. When playing vampires, you should bleed hard on round two. It may help against Mulva with only three to four cards left in last round. Yeah, I agree with you. But you have to win round one, which is impossible always. Krach. Got the heart. Just play Warakwax and Leader ability with <laughs> damage or a lock. You should probably try this wholesome Queen's Guard deck to destroy both Mulvine vampires. No, leave the poor vampires alone. Aw, nice. That was nice. See, that's the sort of thing we're taking notes of. That was really nicely done. I like it. Okay, Onslaught, check. Not bad. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next, I would like to play my sentry. Mm, do this again. Hey, Lionheart. How are you doing? And hey, Kafkarapu. V is great versus Mulva. Yeah, but V is the greater evil. A red's a red. No, it's not. Uh, I think after V was a thing, V will always be the greater evil. V is horrible to play against. V doesn't get any rewards for beating Mulva. V takes zero brain cells, whereas Mulva actually forces you to think. It's easy to screw up Mulva. Believe me, it's quite easy to screw it up. 
I'm good, thank you. Hoping for a short day at work today. So you can watch The Witcher, yes? Hmm, okay. He won the round. GG. Well played. Onslaught. So, he's committed quite a bit, but he's probably gonna 2 0 now. Good on him. <laughs> so you can play quaint. No, my friend, tomorrow's too late. I might rewatch it a few times, but tonight I'm going to sit through the whole thing. I think this is the hand. Looks like it. Okay, so obviously that's quite a big mistake to make. one episode release or all of them um i think it would be probably be all of them at the same time i'm not sure how late today it's going to be released though okay so they're going for the bleed which is good that's 100 what you need to do uh i probably do go for something like <sighs> incinerating trap what is my favorite faction? NR, Northern Realms. We probably want to play our uh, Pitfall Trap, but... Ah, oh, nice, okay. That is fine. I don't really want to play Cyasynthesis. How many traps do we actually have left? Um, let's see. not enough. Well, here we go. Okay. It was enough? Oh yeah, because of the trigger. Uh, you're right, I guess. Uh, you are correct. Nice, I'll Dane time. Okay. Do we want to go for the Sabertooth Tiger or do we want to go for Epier Hatueri? Difficult decisions need to be made. Tiger. I think Hatuari might have been the right one, but uh, we'll see. Ah, I think I'm sick. Bless me, thank you. Children, elders, we spare 
muted, I'm sorry. I'm saying, uh, yeah, it could be Omicron, but I already have a vaccine, so it shouldn't be deadly if it is. Our numbers are quite high at the moment. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, let's see, four into the seven. Four into the seven. With three left, that should do it. Okay, King Bran. He might not point me, to be fair. It's certainly a possibility. Monster Swarm is really good against Mova. <laughs> Do you mean it? Nice. Mm. Again, I still don't think we necessarily have enough here. But GG if that's the case. Well played. I think they win. Okay, this is the first deck that is a nice anti-Mova deck I quite like. Especially with the Onslaught ability, because he had a very nice combo where they killed Saskia, and I'm a huge fan of it. So this is the first one on our list, which is quite synergistic. Come on, give me something that destroys Mulva. Give me anything. Slap Mulva in the face so I can make a deck guide about that deck this has potential this Somebody has potential king of beggars this has a lot of points independent of whether you're facing a deck with cards you can interact with he, he played so good and still lost i know i know again i need like two or three games where i get slapped and then we're gonna move on i'll have all the information i need as uh, thanks for the follow Hmm, okay. Should Mary got attain one streak with somehow the madman? Rodea soldiers with Ramon. What about good old Mul? You mean against Mulva? Or just me? I never GG trap players, that's completely fair. I don't expect the GG if I'm gonna be honest. Against Mulva. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think. I don't think Mulva would necessarily beat Mulva. Unless you're saying to get rid of Mulva in the deck. We'll need full Z6 CV 1265X for that. Don't you think about me? You take care of yourself? Where is my nickname? My nickname? Beastie? Perhaps a different ingredient. An active one. Okay, so what I want to do is play Call of the Forest into Saskia, Range Row. It gets me ahead. Now, winning on even is what we want to do. The problem is just we want to bleed out Savola. That's how we win, is bleeding out Savola around two. It's a bit more difficult to do though. Humes are scum. I prefer L. War. Okay, I'm using too many leader pings unnecessarily. No T, I don't do this. Maybe I should make it clear in the title. Building an Anti Nova deck. One more feather and we're done.
because I haven't faced what I wanted to yet, which is Shield Wool. I think Shield Wool is a very nice anti MOBA deck, and that's the deck I want to build. But nobody's giving me anything to work with. They're playing other decks. Uh, Jackpot is a nice anti MOBA deck, but it's not amazing. Filthy no units. <laughs> hey, line tie. Three, four, five, three, four, five. Okay, so how about. Mm, do we want to go into the long round, maybe? Six, five, nine, ten. What are we missing? A few cards, aren't we? Doesn't feel as annoying as the usual Sarah's Lippy slander. And we're playing a bounty version, are we? I mean, I appreciate all the traps, but the movement decks are toxic. It is toxic. I agree with you. Not even disputing it a little bit. I am on the same page. This yeah, deck is I far too it. strong. And... It needs to be changed. But the problem is it's not so strong that it needs a hotfix either. I think the meta can de evolve around Mova to make Mova <laughs> less good, if you will. And it's my goal to help do that today by building an anti Mova deck. And from there on out building a few before I go away on vacation. Let's get Maddox out. Hey Calvino, how are you doing? Specimen Shield Wall is a clown deck. <laughs> Why? Oh, he's playing Igni in it, isn't he? Yeah, that's Specy. He normally has very unique decks. I mean, he can pull them off. I want to build a Shield uh, Wall deck as well, but um, a more casual one, I guess. Where am I going on vacation? I'm going to Haramanus. It's uh, here in South Africa. Do I just try and bleed my friend or not? It's next to the beach, so gonna be a lot of fun, I think. Um, I also want to pass, if I'm gonna be honest. But I don't think we necessarily get out. We can always test whether the person has Savola or not, but... I have way too many cards here, I don't want to commit. You know what, if I had Aldane, I would 2-0. I normally do. But I don't have Aldane. I don't know if I can actually bleed it out. Uh, Lord Streaming's worth. Thanks for the follow. Because Shield Wall beats maybe only Mola. Oh, I don't think so. How long is my vacation? About five to six days. So I'll be back before New Year's. Don't worry. Very tired as, as it's 2 a.m. in Kona land. <laughs> One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest. That was fun. I just got an idea, they might not have a spender if I play my cards, right? But how do I win in a short round? I have to get everything out. I feel like this isn't the way to do it. Uh, I don't know. Normally one has a single sea jackal in hand, not two. The fact that they're thinking makes me think they have an awkward hand. Nice. Okay, great stuff. That's what I want to see. Okay.
We're missing our card. That's not great. Oh, and we lose. See, it happens. It happens. In this world, only two things are certain. Mova is not Mova is not indestructible. <laughs> oh, okay. They got everything they need. Yeah, this is a GG. GG well played. Don't leave me here. GG. You shouldn't have picked that. Collusion meta win when the units stick on board. Oh no. Hmm. What's the place you're going to? Well, it's next to the beach, so I'm gonna spend time at the beach, eating ice cream at the beach, chilling at the beach, eating some sushi at the beach. Very peaceful. Did they just throw a card away? Probably have enough cards as it is. I had Al Dane, I would probably have won this. But with Savola, there's no way. <sighs> take a sip, I shall take one later. Oh, well, I have some water here. Mm. You will not stand in the way of my master's plans. I won't let you. Yeah, if we had Aldain, let's see, it would have been oof, three, six, nine, twelve points plus six is eighteen points. I think we might have still lost, in all honesty. Hmm. Yeah, so King of Figures is also a nice way to simply outpoint Mulva, I'd say. Hmm. 